The thought of teaching math at home can be almost as scary as thinking about my toddler running around with a permanent marker. And this is such a hang up. I hear from so many moms like, how the heck are you teaching math? And I was nervous about this subject too. It was probably the one that I was most nervous about. Not because I'm not good at math, but it's intimidating. So I was super excited when we found the math program we used in first grade. And now that we're gonna continue using in second, a math curriculum that my daughter absolutely loves. She's progressing and one that's fun and only takes 20 minutes to stay and completely open and go. So if you've been looking for a math curriculum that doesn't make you wanna pull your hair out, that actually helps your child move along and fall in love with math, then today we're reviewing Math with Confidence. If we haven't met yet, my name is Brandy Mouse. We are an eclectic homeschool family. I'm a full-time working mom. My husband also is a stay-at-home. I have a seven-year-old that's going into second grade and a two-year-old who's joining us this year with taught schooling. And today, I'm super excited to show you our favorite math curriculum, one that my daughter absolutely loves. And I'm gonna tell you the things I don't love about it, but aren't a deal breaker for our family. So you can decide is Math with Confidence the right homeschool math program for your family? And stick around to the end of the video because I'm actually gonna take you through how we organize all of our math manipulatives so they don't end up under the couch cushions or the junk drawer, but they stay nice and organized so you're never looking around being like, where the heck are they? As a first year homeschooling mom, when I got Math with Confidence, I did a ton of research and it looked like the right option. And I can go on and spoiler alert, say it was the right option for our family. Doesn't mean I love everything about it, but I love enough about it where I'm not looking for anything else. So we just completed year one and now we're moving on to year two. I wanna show you how I changed up how we actually bind and organize. Last year I didn't have a binding machine when I got started and I wanted to, I bought the PDFs and when I bought the PDFs, I printed them all out. I didn't even have enough white paper. <laughs> so embarrassing, but this shows you, you don't have to have everything perfect to homeschool and it works just fine. So I got a binder, I printed out the entire parent's guide, and then I put all of her worksheets inside of these sleeve protectors. So the whole lesson would have five sheets in there. So I would know this is the one we're working on this week. Here's all five sheets or four sheets. And then we'd keep them in here. And that's how I organized it. And so it was not pretty. It was not fancy at all, but it worked. And then in the front, I had this folder and this is where I put like our tin frames and all the game sheets that you need. And that lived in there. So this is how we did it, y'all. I had pink paper and then <laughs> coral paper and yellow paper. This just shows you that you don't have to have it all together to homeschool. And this worked perfect for us last year, no complaints. So I have all the sheets that are already copied and they're in a file folder for once it's time for our two-year-old to go through Math with Confidence, then he'll have all the sheets. So that will be our first year math for him too. Now for this year, I was a little bit smarter <laughs> with how I did it. One, I got the instructor's guide. Instead of doing PDF, I got the nice manual. And so this will be my guide for this year. And I'm happy to have this because it's way nicer. It's gonna last longer than the binder. But then once again, I got the hard copy and I removed the binding and then I made copies of all the pages. So I have another one of these workbooks already made and that will be for when our little one gets into second grade. His book's already made and we didn't have to pay for it again. And then I'll just put this one with it. But this is Riley's workbook. It is the student's one. It's colored, which is really nice. And now she'll just have her workbook that she can work from instead of me pulling out the sheets. It's just nicer organized than this big old binder. Now let's break it down what I love about the curriculum. And then I'll talk about what like I don't really love. And I want this to be real honest. It's not perfect. I don't think any curriculum choice is gonna be perfect, but with math with confidence, it is spiral. So they come back to topics that's not mastery. I like that. I think it's good to review it because my daughter especially, she'll get it really quick. But then sometimes if we come back to it in three weeks, it, do, it's, it doesn't click as fast. So I like that this one revisits it. And I found that she actually has 
learn to master the skill through that. So I do love that about it. Also, I love that it's about 20 minutes a day. It is quick, I can do it. It's one of our first subjects that we do in the morning. It's 20 minutes and we, it also fits in our four day a week schedule. How this is set up is you have the unit, it'll say like unit one. And so it'll tell you like, what are we gonna be doing over the weeks, the overview, what your child will learn, recommended picture books. I do love that. I do end up getting these from the library if they have them. So the picture books, and then you have an idea. So I go over this at the beginning of the month when I do my six week planning, I'll go through, write down which picture books I wanna get from the library, go in and order those so they're ready. But then each Sunday I review this before. So it takes me like five minutes to review it. What are we going through? And then each day takes you into, okay, here's week one. This is what we're gonna be doing. Lesson 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5 is optional. So this is what I absolutely love is because we're on a four day a week schedule. So this works really well for our family because there's four main lessons and then there's an enrichment. So if I feel like she's not really comprehending that topic, we'll do the Friday enrichment, but the majority of the time we didn't. So it's nice because it's only four days a week. And then we get into the actual lesson. And with the actual lesson, it goes into a warm up, the activities and the workbook. So that's the flow. So we do warm up. So for us, it was like, put these coins out in front of them, have them count it back to you. We'll say the days of the week or whatever it may be. So you have a little warm up to get the brain working. And then you go into the actual teaching, but she teaches through games. So if you are not a game person, this is not gonna be the curriculum for you. And I'll talk about that. So it's hands-on learning with math. You're pretty much using math manipulatives every single lesson. And then it tells you step-by-step -step what to say. So the bold is what you say. Today, you'll begin your new math book. You already know a lot about math. And then the unbold would say, discuss what your child learned and enjoy in her first math program. And so then it's giving you like key things to say. And as last year when we were just going into homeschooling, this built my confidence up so fast knowing exactly what to say. And so if you are someone who math is intimidating or you're just getting started, I think this is such a great way to dive into homeschooling because it tells you what to say and builds you that confidence. And then we get into the activities. So for this one, it's the double 10 frame. So that's like the learning. And then there's usually a game that goes along with it. So this is the play edition climb and slide and it gives you the rules. And so you'll play that game and then you do the workbook. So it's warm up, teach, activity, worksheet. And that's the flow. It never has taken us more than 30 minutes. It's usually 20 minutes that we're doing this. So I love the format. I love the open and go. I love the game. I love that my daughter <laughs> loves math. When I asked her what her favorite subject was, she said math. So that was really, really good. And I really like how she incorporates the spiral approach. Now, there are some things I don't love as a parent about this curriculum. One, I don't always wanna play the game. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, just do the worksheet. You know this, like just do the worksheet. And we end up doing the game. My daughter, every day when we sit down for mass, oh, is there a game today? I'm like, yes, there's a game today. But I don't always wanna do the game. So if you're someone who's gonna get super annoyed by the game or your child's not gonna like the games and they just want a straightforward approach, this is probably not the curriculum for you. I will say most kids at this age love the games. They love the hands-on. So even though I'm not always the biggest fan of it, I know it's like creating this atmosphere where she's falling in love with math. And for that, I'll do the games. But if you are a parent that really, really, really dislikes the games, this is not gonna be the curriculum for you because they lean heavily on the games. The other thing that was a little bit of new to me is when I was in school, we had, we like memorized four plus four, five plus five, six plus six. That was a memorization. How she teaches is not by that. It's more of a visual cue and learning math facts that way. And I think that that caused so I'm like me being like, wait, you should know four plus four. And she doesn't always, like some of them she does, but like 
She doesn't, she doesn't have a grasp on all of this really strongly yet. And I don't want to push her. We did add on the addition facts that stick and I understand her philosophy behind how she does it. So we're going to be working through those before we start up second grade. So we just, she can get those because I do think that's important, but she doesn't do it through memorization. She does it through like activities and that's a six week workbook of doing it four or five days a week. So we are gonna be working on our math facts and we're gonna be working through that book and it is all through games. And so that is one thing where I was like, can't we just like flashcard this? And when she explained why, I was like, okay, I guess I get this. So that would be one thing that I would say is, the math facts really haven't stuck yet with her. And so hopefully after we go through this, they will which isn't the end of the world. She can still figure out problems. It just takes her longer. She's doing more like finger counting and stuff like that instead of knowing, oh, this is that. The other thing with this program is there are a lot of manipulatives. And I am actually gonna take you through at the end of how I organize all these, but you can see it's a lot. And so there's a lot of moving pieces. So I will say if you are someone who does not like a lot of things, that's me. I like don't like a lot of little things and this is a lot of little things. You gotta figure out how to organize it. And since we have this, we started off with this. It hasn't been that big a deal, but there are like a lot of moving pieces to this when it comes to the manipulation. My last thing with this, which is just like such a little nitpicky thing, is that how she teaches, at least in first grade, is when they're adding, they go across and they do subtraction across, which was fine when we were doing like four plus four, or four plus nine. But then towards the end, we get into bigger subtraction, bigger adding like 10 minus five, or where we're getting into double digits. And she still writes them across instead of up and down. And I've seen in other math programs, I think like Good and the Beautiful and some other ones in the work and the Evan Moore workbook that she's just working through now is that that one's written down and she does much better with that. So on some of those problems, I actually stepped in and taught her and we use the whiteboard a lot for this. So we always have a whiteboard for the math. We do a lot on the whiteboard. So having this has been really great because she can rewrite the problems, but that is something that's, ugh. But I did see in the second grade, I think she does start moving them, doing some of the problems going down instead. So I think that will help. But last year towards the end, that was a little bit of a pet peeve that we had. Okay, so even with those pet peeves, we love the program. My daughter loves it. She gets excited about math. And I think that's what's important is that she's excited about math. And in kindergarten, when she did math, she always did well, but it was never like, she would never say that that was her favorite subject. So for her to say like her favorite subject this year was math was really fun. And she's excited when I was getting all this out, she's, oh, I can't wait to get started. And she loves the workbook, she loves the games. And so for that alone, I'm like, we'll continue. <laughs> we'll continue using it. No matter if there are some of those little nitpicky things that I don't love about it, we'll continue to use it because she loves it, she's thriving. Let's continue. So if you're like, okay, I can do this. I want to help you. you should organize your math manipulatives. And in the front of the book, they tell you the ones you're going to need. Now I got really lucky. My sister-in-law was a first grade elementary teacher before we started homeschooling and she got moved to third. So she was getting rid of a ton of her stuff. So I didn't have to buy all these. So some of the math manipulatives we have because it was given to us and that worked out really nice. But I did go through and I made my tackle box a math manipulative. I got this at Michael's when it was on sale. So definitely use a coupon for this. I think I got it 40% off, which made it super, super cheap. And I'll link it up in the description. And when you open it up, you have all these little boxes. And then I just took our label machine and put what it was. And so this is our bear counters. So we have our little bears and we use these all the time. And then they say you need 10 toys for the first one. So she had these. So we just use these as our little toys for when you're doing like your shop. There's a lot of shopping things where we put numbers on. These were our little toys that we did for the 10 toys instead of having like balls and all that kind of stuff. We had these. We had two-sided counters. So once again, from the sister-in-law. The play money, I actually just printed out some play money and laminated it. So we have our play money, our tens, 
our fives. And then my sister-in-law had a bunch of coins. She didn't have the dollars. So we have the play coins in here as well. We have two things of number blocks based on how many it told us to have. More two-sided counters. And then we had pattern blocks. So we put those in here. You'll use pattern blocks. So we have those. Multicolored counters. And we changed up which ones we were using based on the game. So these were really great for bingo games. And then we have our cards and dice in here. So two card decks, four dice. And then we have extra coins. And then you're supposed to have number cards that you write out on these note cards. And so all of our, I just got a bunch of note cards. We just use these. We also have pre-printed ones, but these didn't work really well for us. And then we put our rollers in here. You need those towards the end of first grade. So we have this that we use. This is the only thing that doesn't fit into our manipulatives but we just put it on top so it's not a big deal and then there are a few things that we always have with us when we're doing math one is a pencil of course we always have our dry erase marker and our board and we use that a lot for the math lessons so that's how we organize everything we keep it nice and together and so when my daughter comes down all she has to do come on down she grabs this she grabs the books then she'll go grab the whiteboard, the pen, and a pencil, and that's all we need. It's really nice, and like I said, it's open and go. No prep needed, and really, it's just like quick, easy, and kids love math with confidence. So who is math with confidence right for? Anyone who wants something that's open and go, out of the box, this is it. If you are someone who really likes hands-on activities and your child thrives with that, this is it, and you like this viral approach, then Math with Confidence, and it's a really affordable price compared to some other math programs out there, Math with Confidence is 100% a great one to try. And a curriculum doesn't work with everyone, but I can't speak highly enough how it's worked for our seven-year-old and how I'm excited to continue using them. Now, who is this not for? If you are someone who does not want a bunch of manipulatives, if you are someone who does not want to play games, if you are someone who wants like just a workbook style, then this is probably not for you. But if you're just looking for a really good, well-rounded math program that your kids are gonna fall in love with and they like hands-on, they like games, I highly recommend it. But like I said, it's not gonna be for everyone and you have to find what curriculum works for you. And I can honestly say math with confidence works for us. So tell me in the comments, what math curriculum are you using? And what is one tip that you have for organizing your math manipulatives?